Hey, this is Peter from the Ultimate WordPress Guide. So today Elementor released Elementor Pro 3.3 and in this video I'll show you two of the cool newly added features, the hotspot and the video playlist widgets. So let's take a look at how it works. First I'll start by creating a new section. I'll set the view height to 100% to make it visible across the entire screen. Then I'll go ahead and just give this a background color. I'll go to the style section and just drag the color picker. Next I'll go to the Elemental Widgets panel and add the Hotspot widget. I'll select the image that I have in my media library. And I'll adjust the size to suit. I'll make it about 80 pixels wide. Over on the content section, there's not too much to do on the image settings, but down in the hotspot settings is where I can see where I'll add the various hotspots. I can see that there's already a hotspot, but it's not really visible on screen, not unless you look for it very closely. So I'm going to go ahead over to the style tab first. And under the hotspot section, I'll go and set the hotspot color to something that's a bit more visible. And as you can see, that hotspot appears right there. So let's head over to the content section. I'll navigate down to the hotspot area and down into the default hotspot item that's available. So I can see that there's a content and a position section first option available is a label so I can add some text and you'll see that that replaces the hotspot or that effectively becomes the hotspot but I'm not going to do that I quite like the hotspot uh, icon that I have there next over I can add a link to the hotspot I can show it as no icon I can upload an SVG file or I can specify an icon from the icon library I'll leave it as is for now in here and we'll touch on it a little bit later is the custom hotspot size and over here I'll add some text which will effectively be my tooltip area so I'll add okay I'm happy with that over to the position tab this is where I can set the horizontal and the vertical offset I'm pretty happy with where that is in its current position I'll just uh, round up those numbers and again here, I can set some custom tooltip properties. Um, in this instance, I can see that the tooltip is currently displayed at the bottom, but for every tooltip, I can adjust the text position to show up individually per hotspot in a different location. So I'll leave that at the bottom for now. I'll go ahead and create a few more. Okay, with that done, let's take a look at some of the other options that are available in this section. So first up is animation. The current animation is set to expand and as you can see that's the effect that's currently applied to the hotspots. I can change that to a soft beat which is a small sort of pulsating effect. I can change that to an overlay which is just a simple dot that changes the opacity of the hotspot as I hover over and needless to say none is none. I'll keep that at expand as uh, I quite like the effect that this presents. The sequent animation or the sequenced animation area is as you can see with a sequence duration of 5000 milliseconds it effectively just sequences the way that the hotspot appears on the screen 1 through 5. I'll go ahead and just switch off the sequenced animation for now. So just before I head over to the style tab as I've mentioned before you have the ability to add an icon to the hotspot but I'm not going to do that right now I'll show you an example in just a moment so heading over to the style tab there's not really many settings that I can adjust first and foremost I can adjust the size of the hotspot I'm pretty happy with a 20 pixels there I can set the typography if I've set text as the hotspot earlier uh, minimum width height I can set the box color now at the moment you wouldn't see much change to the box color and this box color only gets applied if I specify an icon like so. 
So if I go back over to the hotspot area, I select an icon from the icon library. Yeah, I can see that the icon is applied. The hotspot is a little larger just to accommodate the size of the icon. Going back to the style tab and under the hotspot section, if I go back down to the box color and I change that color, you can see that the area around the icon changes. Now just to show you what that really means, you'll see that in the area below where I set the border radius earlier, if they set that back down to zero, you can see that's the box area there. And obviously I can also go ahead and set the padding around that area, but I'm pretty happy with uh, a minimum padding. Let's leave that, uh, let's, uh, let's say uh, 10 pixels. Okay, I'll set the border radius back to 20 and, uh, and there we go. Before I go further, I'll just reset this back to its default settings. So I'll change the box color back to white. I'll go to the hotspot. I'll select the hotspot and I'll just remove that icon. Okay, so next over to the tooltip area. So the tooltip is the little piece of text that we saw earlier that we entered before that displays uh, just below the hotspot area. So at the moment, as you can see, it requires me to click on that hotspot for that to appear. So under the content section, here I have the option to set the global positioning of the, the uh, tooltips. So I can set that to display to the left, bottom, top and right. The trigger, of course, I can set that to hover. So when I hover over the hotspot, it appears. And then lastly, none, which will just display all of the tooltips by default. I quite like the hover effect. Yeah, so when I hover over the hotspot, the tooltip appears. I can set various animations, fade in, fade out, grow, fade by direction, slide by direction, and set the animation duration. I'll leave that as is. So over to the style tab, there are a couple of settings that I can set on the tooltip. First and foremost, obviously the text color. By default, you can see that the text color is already white but I'll just go into the color picker and I'll set that to white. I can set the typography. I can set the text alignment. And then we get to the box area, which is effectively the box that will display around the tooltip text area. So the box width, I can define that to be as large or as small as I want to. I can set some padding around the text. And then obviously I can set a box background color. So you'll see if I hover over that area, displays the box color in black. I'll drag that opacity down just a little bit so I can see some of the content behind it. Uh, one more thing, I like to add a bit of a border radius just to give it some soft edges and I can also add a box shadow if I wish. So that's the new hotspot widget in a nutshell. Allows you to create very cool, very intuitive, interactive images with hotspots for your design projects. Hope you enjoyed. Next up, we'll look at the video playlist widget. I already have a section that I've created. I have a heading video playlist. I'll go over to the widget library and I'll search for the video playlist widget and I'll drag that onto the canvas. Now by default, you'll see that it comes with some pre-styling, some preloaded videos, which is pretty cool. And I can go and change these to suit. So obviously starting from the top, I have the playlist name, which I can change. That's the name that gets displayed in this area. And I've got a couple of sample videos. On the sample video, I can see that I have a few options. Most popular YouTube self-hosted videos. On the YouTube videos, I can add the URL. And a very cool feature, if I click on the get video data, it will draw the video data from YouTube, updating the title and the duration. You can see that if I change this by default to say two minutes and three seconds, you'll see that that also updates in the playlist area. And again, if I click the get the video data, that will default back to the actual video duration. Okay. So underneath there is the thumbnail, which will display over the top of the video. I can add the content tabs. And these are areas where I can add some additional content like a description to the video. Um, and I have two tab options available. 
Okay, heading over to the tab section, this is what we've just talked about before. If I change that to the description, you'll see that that description changes below. Is this collapsible? Yes. What is the collapsible text that I want to display? What is the read more label? What is the read less label? And this is really ideal for when I have a lot of content to display in this description area or this tab area. Okay, in terms of image overlay, currently the image overlay is on. So if I want to show a different image overlay, I can go and select an image from my library from here. I can change the play icon uh, or I can not show an icon at all. Okay, some of the additional options that are available on the video playlist area is display. Do I want to display the playlist on the left or the right or rather the video on the left or the right? Do I want to auto play the video on load? Do I want to play the next up video? Do I want to indicate whether the video has been watched or not? We'll talk about that a bit more in the style section. Do I want to display the video count? That's this area right, right there. Do I want to show the duration in the column? Do I want to show the thumbnails of the videos? Yes or no? What does the play icon look like? What does the watched icon look like? And importantly for performance, do I want to activate or deactivate the lazy load feature? Okay. Not much else to show in this area. I think we've covered pretty much everything. Over to the style tab, as with many of the Elementor widgets that we have available, they have very powerful styling options. So in terms of layout, I can set the height of my video player or the video playlist player. The top bar area is that area over there where I can go ahead and change the background color. I'll change that to black. I'll change the text color to white to make it really pop. That's the top bar. I can change the typography. I can change the video amount color. So I'll go and adjust that, make that white as well. Down to the video section. So the video section, items, background color, typography, duration color, typography. Do I want to display an icon? What is the icon color? So that's that icon on the left hand side. What is the size of the icon that I want to display? Do I want to have a separator between the videos? Next we have the section styling. Very basically set section background, color, typography, border type, width, etc. And last but not least, under the tab section is where I can set the, the border width. I can set the border color, background color. I can set the title color, active color the content itself of the description area, the typography, any padding that I need around the content, the show more and the show less text, so on and so forth for the normal and the hover state. And that's it really. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful or helpful, please let us know. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications and stay tuned for more great content. I've put a few links to tools, services and plugins that I use in the description below. These are affiliate links. If you purchase a product through one of them, I will receive a commission at no cost to you of course. I only endorse products that I have personally used and your support helps me put out more great content. So thanks. Bye for now.